On this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at beneficial insects for aphids in cannabis production and how you can utilize these beneficial insects instead of insecticides for controlling an aphid population. All right, so let's get into the video here to help you control your aphids with beneficial insects. Here's a link to the article and the uh, proper citation for that article if you wanna look at more of the information, particularly of their materials and methods, and they studied more than just aphids in this article. So first off, challenges in the greenhouse production just in general. Well, greenhouse cannabis cultivation and insect infestations can cause many losses across the board. Synthetic chemicals and insecticides have been a go-to option in the past, but with the stringent uh, scanning of final flower and materials and legal restrictions as far as applications of any sort of products, this is all the driving force between the development of a new environmentally friendly uh, and profitable methods for insect control. Uh, for the plants. So the greenhouse study is a little bit of the background. It was conducted at, in the Agriculture University of Athens. The cannabis plants were grown in two different greenhouses. The beneficial insects were released only in one greenhouse, the treatment as we'll see, and no additional pesticides were used during cultivation. It gives you the uh, monoecious variety that was used as well as the temperature and humidity fluctuations for the growing environment. Now, the beneficial insects, the release date, three weeks after the transplantation, beneficial insects were released to the treated greenhouse in order to assess the efficiency of the biological pest management. So the species here that we're gonna focus on is aphids. So that was the main one that was identified. This is generally how they look. I'll show you a little bit more specifics of some variants, just to give you an idea of how small um, they are. If you haven't seen them, they tend to be found also on the underside of the leaves, at least initially. So the basic measures here, here we can see a bunch of different insects and all identified right down there. Uh, but basic uh, measurements include visual estimations of the infestation, recording of the pest species and populations, and comparison of infestations between the two greenhouses. And only the nymphs in adult stages of the pest were counted, not the egg stage for any of the insects that they studied. Now the pest population determination, how do we determine, how was that determined? Uh, basically the pest populations were taken in the third, fifth, and seventh, and ninth week of the growing. The number of aphid pests was, con was counted with a hand lens uh, in order to identify the efficiency of the beneficial insects. Average pest populations were measured in 10 plants, four leaves per plant per greenhouse on average. So it's important with any pest that we're looking at studying, and this is true for aphids as well as others, to have an idea what the life cycle is of that pest. Now there's a lot of information here, so um, you're welcome to pause the video and take a look at it more yourself. Uh, but the key parts here are that they're a piercing, sucking insect, and aphids can also uh, transmit viruses as well. They can be a vector for viruses. Um, so that's another reason to keep their uh, numbers under control on top of the physical damage they can do, also the transmission of viruses. Now they have a complex life cycle. Uh, if what's kind of weird about aphids in particular is that females can give birth to live, already pregnant young female clones. So it's kind of like they can really mass multiply very, very fast. So keep that in mind as well. Now identification of aphids, while well, we're gonna kind of generally put them all in the same general classification here of aphids, I want you just to realize that there are different species, cotton or melon aphids, compared to your green peach, potato, uh, peach potato, tobacco aphids, or your true potato aphids, your foxglove aphids, how all of these uh, are in the, the same category, but their head shapes can be used for identification, coloration, and some more details here. So if you had aphids and identified them with a, a magnifying loop, you can probably identify the specific type that you have in your particular growing operation. Now, as beneficial insects that target aphids, this is what the study looked at. And they looked at the aphidias uh, combination here. And they are small wasps, and they, and they parasitize the aphids. So we can see here this wasp actually infects the aphids with um, small little eggs uh, that go on to complete their life cycle, and then basically eventually just take out uh, the aphid population. Many species do occur in the Northeast and enter greenhouses naturally. So this is why broad uh, insecticide killing of everything is not advised. And this gives you also the life cycle here of the aphidias as well. Um, and there's about a two week life cycle for them. And this is that ready to infect those aphids there. It just shows you a little size and visual comparison. 
Now another uh, beneficial insect here, uh, these are green lacewings, uh, Chrysophilia uh, carnaria, uh, and they are green lacewings. We can see an adult right here. And then we see the larval stage here. So very contrasting larval to adult stage. Again, some more information here. Their eggs kind of of the uh, green lacewings are kind of like these white little areas on a thin little hair, um, kind of suspended there. So you can take a look and hopefully find some of those. This is kind of, again, shows you their life cycle as well. So both of these are beneficial insects specifically to target if you have aphids. Uh, in the c other controls, so how were they, you know, how are the application methods? Well, for the aphidias here, they were put in what's called dye boxes, which are like little boxes that basically hang within the plants. Uh, the lacewings, the larvae, was basically introduced by sprinkling the content uh, from the bottle around the area. So these, a lot of times this comes in sawdust or rice hulls, so they're very, very small, so you're spreading that. Also keep in mind you want to keep these well spread uh, because the green lacewings can cannibalize themselves before going after any aphid species. Now, what did the numbers look like? What's the, what did the data actually show? And this kind of provides you an idea of the actual data here. So overall, great reduction in aphid numbers with the beneficial insect treatments. Final numbers were not may not be zero in a population, but to have only about four and a half per plant when treated with the beneficial insects compared to 300 uh, in control plants is, shows a massive reduction. This gives you the specific kind of information right here, their data table, and the graph really speaks to the, the treatment here. So initially, we three, uh, populations in both greenhouses were relatively the same, at least not statistically different. We can see the control, which is the one that did not have any beneficial insects, how it massively went through an exponential increase. It did drop a little for week nine, but when we compare these to the control treatments, the ones that had the beneficial insects, we can see their ever decreasing numbers here. Um, so a great benefit to utilizing uh, these beneficial insects. So average number of pests in the population, as I said, this study did look at other insects, but focusing specifically on the aphids right here, and that's what the numbers I quoted before, average number of pest populations in the treatment greenhouse in 80 plants, and we could see the um, great comparison um, there. How I got that down, only 368 per 80 plants. And these are numbers are uh, in uh, per week here. There. So a continuous reduction in all pest populations was observed with the experiment approaching zero value per plant. So kind of maybe not reaching zero, but definitely getting very close to zero. Now what was not mentioned in this study uh, was actually uh, lady beetles, which a lot of you may think of when you hear aphids. You may think, oh, well, I treat with you know lady beetles. Well, keep in mind if you are going to go with lady beetles, uh, they can kind of deteriorate rapidly if they're not handled properly. You can have a lot of loss or death loss there, uh, dieback on uh, ones that you're purchasing. So keep them refrigerated if they cannot be used immediately, but should be used immediately. Use adequate um, release dates, oftentimes repeated applications about seven days apart is needed for if you're utilizing lady beetles. Lady beetles need a good supply of aphids, so if your population of aphids is really low, consider other options. Release lady beetles at the dusk or early evening, kind of when the sun or lights are kind of going off there to avoid the heat of the day upon their initial release. Expect lady beetles to fly away in a few days. About 95% of lady beetles will fly away in 48 hours, with the rest being gone in four to five days, uh, and they are unlikely to lay eggs in your plants. So if aphids do return, you'll have to reinduce lady beetles. Probably why they weren't um, a participant in this particular study. Now, are beneficial insects worth the effort? I get this question a lot, and in short, yes. This study indicates that beneficial insects could control pest populations up to 100%. Pest management with natural enemies is promising, very effective, safe method for plant protection, as well as applicator. Uh, and so this is a little effort there. The timing is important. Uh, so keep all of that in mind, which you can have great control. Uh, lastly, what growers need to keep in mind is really that proper pest ad identification is important since this will determine the exact beneficial insect to use. If you misdiagnose the insect, if you misdiagnose it and you apply the wrong uh, beneficial insects, it's going to be very little effectiveness. And this does require by the grower frequent scouting. Timing and rate of beneficial insects is also important, and depending on what insect you're trying to target, uh, different areas where you can purchase those insects will provide those recommendations. Hopefully this was uh, helpful to you to identify and control aphid populations, and this can hopefully help save your plants in an environmentally friendly way.